Officially, there have been 32 incidents involving nuclear weapons in the United States. These incidents are documented under the code Broken Arrow. The most dangerous of these is the explosion in the Titan II ICBM silo. Residents of the town of Damascus did not understand what happened. The Titan II was the largest ICBM in service in the United States. The last liquid propellant ICBM developed in the US, it provided the ability to destroy the most defensible targets for 20 years. In 1959, Martin Marietta offered the Air Force an improved version of the Titan I. This modification used an inertial navigation system and stored fuel components to keep it in constant readiness for launch. Although a similar missile was already in development at the time, the solid propellant Minuteman, the payload of the proposed version was so large that the Air Force approved the project in October 1959. A formal contract to develop the Titan II was signed on June 20, 1960. The great similarity to the Titan I greatly accelerated the development of the new missile. On March 16, 1962 its first successful test launch took place, and on February 6, 1963 the first launch was made by the combat crew. Simultaneously with the development of the missile, the design of the silo launcher was underway. Unlike Titan I, which was lifted to the surface before launch, Titan II was launched directly from the silo. Titan I rockets were originally used to test this concept. After two successful launches, the first successful launch of Titan II from an APC took place on April 28, 1963, and the rocket was put on alert. In June 1963, the first Titan II squadron at davis monthan Air Force Base achieved combat readiness. Titan II deployments were also underway at Little Rock and McConnell Air Bases at this time. By the end of 1963 all units were declared combat ready. The major upgrade of the Titan II was the installation of an astro-corrected guidance system, which was first tested on the Titan II on June 27, 1976. More effective than the Titan I, the Titan II nevertheless required much more maintenance than the Minuteman. Because the rocket was liquid fuel, the fuel system required regular checks. Because the fuel was corrosive, the fuel tanks required regular drying and purging to ensure they were airtight. Finally, because the fuel components were highly toxic and ignited on contact, all associated work was hazardous. On the morning of September 19, 1980, the small American town of Damascus, Arkansas, was momentarily illuminated by a blinding flash. Seconds later, the town was shaken by a powerful explosion. Residents were at a loss for words. No one knew what had happened, and black smoke billowed over the missile base a few kilometers away. None of the residents knew they were one step away from a catastrophe the likes of which had never occurred in the history of nuclear weapons. The Titan II intercontinental ballistic missile with a 9.5 megaton thermonuclear warhead exploded in the silo. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima had a yield of 20 kilotons. Many consider it a miracle that the nuclear warhead on the missile did not explode. However, it was lost for almost 24 hours until it was discovered 200 meters from the silo. Fortunately, the warhead's failsafe worked, and the nuclear charge was not initiated. The United States did not want to disclose information about the classified positions of its strategic missiles, but the seriousness of the incident forced it to do so. The U.S. military, despite all attempts to keep this matter quiet, was forced to disclose the details of the ICBM incident as a mass evacuation of the population had to be carried out. How a dropped key triggered a nuclear missile explosion. At approximately 7 p.m. on September 18, 1980, a maintenance team was performing routine maintenance on the Titan II intercontinental ballistic missile. The missile, 30 meters high, was in a launch silo hidden underground just 6 kilometers from the city of Damascus. One of the team's technicians was working on the third level and inadvertently dropped an end wrench, weighing 1.35 kilograms, from a height of 20 meters. From the impact on the bunker wall, the wrench ricocheted toward the rocket. The force of the energy was enough to pierce the thin wall of the fuel tank of the first stage of the Titan II ICBM. The fallen wrench caused a massive fuel leak. Liquid fuel began leaking from the breach, concentrations of toxic vapors increased, and maintenance personnel were forced to leave the silo. 
Soon there was a fire, and the automatic fire suppression system pumped 370,000 liters of water into the shaft. The flames were knocked out, but the concentration of toxic vapors increased significantly. Six hours after the incident, two specialists were dispatched to the mine to try to stop the fuel leak. Once inside the mine, they realized that they would not be able to stop the fuel leak. The vapor concentration continued to rise and would soon reach a critical point where, as a result of interaction with oxygen, an explosion would occur. They left the bunker at 3.01 a.m. and were only a few steps away when the explosion occurred. The force of the explosion tore off the multi-ton lid of the shaft, the shock wave threw the nuclear warhead 200 meters away and the pillar of fire rose 600 meters high. The W-53 thermonuclear warhead landed 30 meters from the complex's gatehouse. Its defenses withstood the mockery and its radioactive fillings were not scattered. Sergeant Kennedy was tossed around and landed 35 meters from the mine with a broken leg. Livingston was left covered in debris, rescuers found him some time later and evacuated him, but he died the same day from his injuries. 21 other people were injured during the explosion and during the rescue effort. In early October, cleanup efforts began. Tons of debris were collected from the area of 160 hectares around the launch complex. About 100,000 gallons of contaminated water were pumped out of the mine. The price of the issue, it would cost $225 million to build a new launch complex instead of the destroyed 374 to 7. It would have cost $20 million to tear down what the rocket explosion did not break, clean up the area, and roll everything underground, gravel and concrete. The Air Force opted for the latter. Consequences of the accident the Congressional Committee that investigated the accident concluded that the Titan II program generally met safety requirements. But it recommended better information sharing between the Air Force and local authorities in the event of accidents, i.e., abandoning the usual Air Force practice of neither confirming nor denying the presence of nuclear weapons at the site. Six airmen, including Livingston and Kennedy, were given aviation medals. The Titan II missile maintenance hangar at Little Rock Air Force Base was named after the deceased Livingston. A total of 21 people were injured in the incident and one person died after inhaling toxic fumes. The U.S. has long concealed the enormity of the incident. A commission of inquiry found that human error was to blame and that the missiles met all safety standards. It is difficult to imagine the results of the 9.5 kiloton bomb blast but it would have been fatal for the town of Damascus. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.